Hi, my name is Dawn Cox and I'm Head of RE at school in North Essex and I'd like to speak to you about some of the enablers and the barriers to good RE. First of all, school leadership is really important. When I first came to this school, RE was really valued, so it kind of made my job easy because leaders supported us in both key stages. They ensured that we got the time that we needed and supported us in what we do. So one of the barriers to good RE is where students don't have enough curriculum time to learn what they should do either not enough or none at all. Uh, we've seen this at GCSE where people think that from the new specification they can have uh, the same amount of time as they did with the old specification and unfortunately it's not enough time and also getting students to do exams early for example in year 10 instead of year 11 and then not providing them with the curriculum time that they should have a key stage for in year 11. So uh, the support of um, SLT is really important and school leaders have a job to ensure that they give us the time needed to be able to teach high quality RE and to support us in doing that. Another enabler is that we are supported through resources. So I have an RE budget and I can spend that how I want to and I can balance that between things such as uh, stationery but also through for CPD, for training for myself and my um, colleagues. So we're lucky enough to have that. Some subject departments don't get any money at all and particularly at primary school they might have to borrow things, ask people for things and not have enough resources. Things like artefacts can really enhance uh, teaching and if you can't afford to buy these teachers shouldn't have to spend money themselves on buying them and unfortunately a lot of teachers do. So having a budget specifically for RE is really important. Another enabler is strong subject leadership. Obviously I'm a head of department and I do all I can to support my colleagues in ensuring that we um, provide high quality RE across the school. Um, I can ensure that our curriculum is coherent and that our schemes have been um, updated so that staff can use them and that they're useful for them, um, sharing resources, things like that. Um, and I can work with colleagues to, on the things that they want as they're part of their CPD, so I can identify how they might be supported and develop their own teaching. Unfortunately, some secondary leaders are by themselves, they're in a department of one, and so that kind of support is missing. And often people will look to support elsewhere, being uh, networks, local networks, maybe RE um, networks online, on social media, things like that. Um, and I think it also can be similar for primary RE coordinators. It can be quite lonely if they're a lone voice in the school, having to work with colleagues that may may not want to teach RE, um, and actually having those local kind of support networks are really, really useful. So where subject leadership is strong, it's going to really support RE where it's um, not there or even if a, uh, a teacher with another subject specialism is leading on RE it might lead to problems within um, the RE curriculum and the actual teaching that is given and um, the quality of learning in RE. Another enabler is CPD. If teachers can access high quality CPD to develop them further then their lessons will become better, their teaching will become better and the students will have better outcomes. So in my school, um, most of the CPD we do together, we actually, in our department meetings, I try to ensure that we talk about things which are improving, particularly our subject knowledge. I think with the new GCSEs for us, it's been a challenge. So we talk about new things, new ideas, we share resources with each other. But subject knowledge is really important um, to keep developing. Um, it's kind of been overlooked in the past, I think, and actually, if we know what we're teaching confidently, in depth, then it will give us um, more chance of delivering good lessons to our students. So one of the barriers to CPD is schools not giving teachers time, not giving them resources. It, it's easy for me, I can pretty much work out where we can find high quality resources to share with one another in terms of CPD, but other people might not know where to go. The school might not provide time or money for that CPD. So if it comes down to an individual, there's a good chance that there's 
lots of other things that will take priority, the immediate day-to-day -day things. So having a good plan for CPD to support teachers can really um, improve uh, the subject across the school. One barrier to high quality RE is curriculum. At the moment I think lots of people are thinking about curriculum and what we have um, presented to our students on a daily basis, what we have in our schemes. However, because there is no national entitlement or no national curriculum in RE, it can be problematical because we have essentially thousands of teachers around the country making their own resources, spending a lot of time trying to make RE engaging. Unfortunately, some have the perception that students don't want to learn about religion. They think it's dry. They think it's boring. Uh, some people have commented about that in the new GCSEs. So actually, some people have resorted to what I call edutainment. That means making lessons more entertainment, entertaining and fun rather than actually focusing on high quality um, religious studies at Key Stage 4, for example. So I think one of the problems that we need to overcome within the RE community is actually possibly coming together to decide actually we should have a national curriculum of things that we should all teach and then actually that would reduce uh, teachers teaching in some cases quite random things which are have tenuous links to studying religious studies um, and we need to think about the curriculum that we are providing for our students. Is it the best things that they could learn to leave to be a good religious studies student at Key Stage 4 or are we just um, babysitting them, entertaining them, keeping them occupied during RE lessons. Another enabler is networking. So I'm lucky enough to be part of our Teaching School Alliance Secondary Network and we get time to meet with other secondary colleagues to discuss things like uh, curriculum, assessment, new GCSEs, A-levels for example. I also meet up with uh, local primary school teachers, part of our feeder um, programme and get to know what they're doing uh, lower down in Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 1 and early years. The problem with this is that it's done in my own time. I organise the secondary network, I decide what's going to happen. Um, I don't get reimbursed for my travel for example. It's all done on goodwill. And there's lots of teachers who, although would love to come, they have their own um, private arrangements. Obviously, personal circumstances mean that you can't just go to a meeting after school in the middle of the week. And therefore, whilst networking is really great in terms of support, it's not always going to work if people can't get to it and if schools don't credit staff for it. If it's not counted as part of a school's CPD programme, then actually staff may be reluctant to take part because they don't get any um, kind of CPD credit for it under their school CPD system.